It might come as a surprise to you, but I honestly believe that Dark Souls is one of the most inspirational games I've ever played. Sure, it takes place in a bleak universe that turns its death loop into part of the narrative, where NPCs end conversations by maniacally laughing at you, and features a recurring character whose entire gimmick is screwing you over. But if you sift through the fog wall and take a close look at the arcs of some of the major figures, even those who meet tragic ends, there are kernels of hope to be found, kindling for the flame of motivation. One character whose story contains such messaging is Laurentius of the Great Swamp. One of the most important skill trainers and merchants in the game, Laurentius provides players with pyromancies, a powerful tool many new players use to get through the game, before becoming the standard bearer of one of the most inspirational phrases in the entire trilogy, a mantra that has taken on significant importance to many members of the Dark Souls community. But before I go on, if you are a Dark Souls fan, then please be sure to like, subscribe, and consider supporting me with a YouTube channel membership or over on Patreon. My dream is to make these videos full-time someday, and by doing any of those things, you'll be helping make that dream a reality. The Chosen Undead first encounters Laurentius in the depths. There's something that's so uniquely old school about the way we meet him. You don't get a side quest to find him, or even learn about him from someone else, you just hear him calling out to you for help. It reminds me of something that would have happened in the old Legend of Zelda games back in the day, how you just happen to run into an incredibly important NPC by chance. It's the type of game design you don't see that much anymore aside from Soulsborne games, which is probably why I like this series so much. It takes me back to my elementary school days, when I was the resident encyclopedia on the Ocarina of Time, passing down all the hints and tips I knew to my friends out at recess. In any case, Laurentius is trapped in a barrel, placed there by a butcher who is planning to eat him. Once freed, he'll be incredibly grateful, as anyone who is about to be devoured by a great knife-wielding hollow would be. Later, the Chosen Undead will find Laurentius back at Firelink Shrine, where he'll reiterate his gratitude and offer to teach them pyromancies. It's here that Laurentius begins his arc as a true source of assistance to players. I've said elsewhere that despite its notorious difficulty, Dark Souls is full of techniques and tactics that can be used to mitigate its more challenging elements, especially in the early going, and pyromancies are a great example of this. Pyromancies don't scale with player attributes. Their power increases as the player upgrades their pyromancy flame. Though this does require a sacrifice of souls that could be used to improve your character's health, stamina, or physical damage output, the payoff is tremendous as it allows the player to unlock an incredibly powerful catalog of spells early in the game. As you can probably tell from this video, I'm not a pyromancy guy. I like to dish out big hits and shake off big damage. That's what works for me. But many are the players who learned to love Dark Souls and overcame its many challenges thanks to the power of pyromancy. As the first tutor in this ancient art that the Chosen Undead meets, Laurentius is, for some folks, the guy who gave them the abilities they needed to beat the game, which makes him a strong example of the forms of assistance the developers have provided to players. But even if you're like me and have no interest in becoming a master of fire, Laurentius is still a great person to talk to and check in with when you return to Firelink Shrine after a harrowing trek through Lordran. He's much more welcoming than the crestfallen warrior, that bastard Petrus, or the vile Lawrence. Talking with Laurentius will reveal some tidbits of lore about pyromancy, that the Witch of Islith is its godmother, that a pyromancer's flame is part of his own body, and that the art is considered to be unsavory by some. This is all interesting, but it's information that's best covered by one of the many lore experts here on YouTube. I'm here to talk about character, and what stands out to me about Laurentius from that side of things is what he says to players every time they part ways. Bye then. Be safe, friend. Don't you dare go hollow. What a beautiful phrase. It's no wonder that Don't Go Hollow has become something of a mantra to the Souls community. Hollowing is, of course, the process through which undead lose their minds, becoming like every other vicious creature the player encounters on their journey. How exactly the NPCs we meet go hollow isn't explicitly clear, 
but it appears that succumbing to despair and losing motivation will do the trick. The meaning behind Laurentius's trademark phrase, as I see it, is twofold. To the chosen undead, he's urging them to keep going, to die and come back no matter how many times it takes, and never lose hope that they will someday reach the kiln of the first flame. As implied by Frampt, we aren't the first undead to ring the bells of awakening. We're just the latest in a long line of would-be godslayers. Many have come before us, meaning that many have ended up going hollow. Who knows how many unfortunate bastards we end up killing on our adventure who were once noble undead like us, determined to succeed Lord Gwyn. When Laurentius says this, he's encouraging you to make sure that you don't end up like them. I'd also like to draw attention to the way he says this. His message isn't just don't go hollow, it's don't you dare go hollow. You saved Laurentius. Your undead life and your success mean a great deal to him, and it comes across in his words. But don't go hollow isn't just advice for the chosen undead. It applies to our player as well. The player finds Laurentius at a point where things are starting to become more difficult. As I said in my last video, Many of the early game bosses can be defeated through tricks like plunging attacks, and one of the few that can't, the Bell Gargoyles, can still be made much easier by calling in the help of Solaire or Lawrence. But not every boss has NPC summons, and many of those that do are still quite challenging, and one of the hardest in our immediate path is Quelag, who's immune to the very pyromancies Laurentius teaches us, the powerful spells that have helped so many players get to this point in the first place. Regardless, whether it's the Chaos Witch, Ornstein and Smo, or Artorius the Abyss Walker, just about anyone who plays Dark Souls will eventually hit a wall. No matter how good you are at this game, one of the bosses in the FromSoft catalog will inevitably get you hard stuck, to the point where you're just about ready to throw your controller at the TV screen and pop the CD in the microwave. At times like this, it's best to remember Laurentius' advice. Don't you dare go hollow. When he says this, he's not just telling the Chosen Undead not to lose motivation. He's telling you, the player, not to surrender, to not give up in the face of adversity. Even if it seems useless, keep on spawning at that bonfire and running through that fog gate until the boss who's been kicking your ass is dead at your feet. You'll get there eventually. As I always tell people, it took me two weeks to defeat the Twin Princes when I first played Dark Souls 3 back in 2018. And now, I'm obsessed with these games. All of this makes Laurentius' fate unfortunately ironic. If the player learns pyromancies from Quelana or the Fair Lady, or gets their pyromancy flame upgraded by them, Laurentius will ask the player where they learned such a power the next time they talk to him. If the player says yes, Laurentius will journey into the swamps of Blight Town where he'll go hollow. I think we can interpret this turn of events in a number of different ways. First, it's a great example of the grim, bleak nature of the side quests that FromSoft tends to employ in their games. Generally speaking, if you don't want something bad to happen to a character, sadly, you're better off never talking to them at all. We see this throughout the Soulsborne series, from Big Hat Logan to Gascoigne's daughter in Bloodborne and all the way up to Elden Ring with Alexander. But in terms of hollowing, it's a demonstration of the fact that this unfortunate fate can befall anyone, even those who make encouraging others to avoid it their catchphrase. About half the cast of Dark Souls 1 can go hollow, and sadly, Laurentius is no exception. Still, there has to be a meta message to this, right? If Don't Go Hollow is advice to both the chosen undead and the player holding the controller, then surely Laurentius going hollow must mean something to both parties as well. Personally, I think that the message to players here is that it's important to know your limits. Blight Town is one of the most dangerous areas in the game. Plenty of players still have PTSD about it, even all these years later. I don't think it's a stretch to say that by going down there, he probably bit off more than he could chew, and ended up succumbing to despair amidst the poison swamps and annoying blow dart douchebags. Perhaps if he'd waited until he was stronger, or more prepared, he wouldn't have ended up going hollow. This is an important message to the player, because Dark Souls is, 
unfortunately not the type of game where a player has no choice but to keep fighting a boss that they're stuck on. You can always turn around, level up, upgrade your weapons and armor, or reinforce your Estus Flask. On my most recent playthrough, I was having a tough time with Ornstein and Smo, until I remembered that I was still on Estus level 1. No wonder even the presence of Solaire wasn't enough to overcome the tag team champions of Lordran. Elden Ring dives headlong into this type of game design, into the idea that you could always go somewhere else and do something else if you are really, truly stuck. But the truth is, it's always been a core part of the Dark Souls formula, and the hollowing of Laurentius should remind us that sometimes a tactical retreat is the right approach. Although Laurentius succumbed to despair, his words live on, as the phrase don't go hollow has become one of the trademark mantras of the Souls community. Many have equated it with battling back against depression or other mental illnesses. It's an apt analogy, and as someone who struggles with anxiety on a daily basis, it's certainly an interpretation I myself identify with. But for me, it goes even deeper than that. I've spoken openly in the past about how I nearly dropped out of college due to a mental health crisis in my sophomore year. Though I managed to pull through, it reared its ugly head several times before I graduated, including during my student teaching placement. After spending four years of my life learning about the ins and outs of education, I came to the horrifying realization that I hated teaching. The lifestyle, the grind, the early morning commute, and the late nights spent grading and lesson planning. I hated every bit of it. But what other choice did I have except to finish out my degree? I was four months from graduation, I didn't want to waste all the money my parents had spent sending me to school. I gutted it out, but at times I nearly went hollow, nearly surrendered to despair. I returned home very close to it, unsure of what I should do with myself now that I felt teaching wasn't the path for me. It was around then that I got a call from a school I would work at in the summers as a power professional, offering me a job as a teacher for a classroom of students with autism and emotional support needs. It was another summer gig, just four weeks, and I needed the money, so I decided to give it a shot. And I'm so glad I did. It turned out to be the perfect job for me. Special education was where I belonged. The unpredictability, the increased importance of establishing a positive rapport with your students, and the flexibility of the educational structure just spoke to me in a way traditional teaching didn't. Because of the specialized nature of the school, Students would enter my class when they were 14, 15, or 16 years old, and they wouldn't graduate until they turned 21. Thus, I was fortunate enough to teach most of my students for the majority of their educational careers, and as the years went by, they started to seem less like a bunch of kids they'd been entrusted to teach, and instead, eight younger brothers I was lucky enough to work with every single day. We had some incredible times together. We wrote and directed homemade movies that we played for the entire school, held epic Thanksgiving dinners, and once met up on a Saturday to attend a funeral for a beloved co-worker who had passed away. A few of them even had roles in my wedding. Playing the Soulsborne series itself was something that they had actually encouraged me to do. Many of them expressed their love for the series all the time and told me non-stop that I had to give the games a try. But just like in Lord Ran, the fire always fades, and every era ends. One by one, my students graduated, and though they were replaced by young men who were just as incredible as those who came before them, the school itself had started to rot around us. Big business took the place over, and started to gut the many things that made it unique. They targeted co-workers I had come to view as friends and mentors, and used the pandemic as cover for their actions. As much as I enjoyed teaching those students, I hated coming into work every day because I just knew that the robber barons now in charge of the school were going to continue to erase the traces of the place I loved as though it were the statues of the nameless king. I knew that if I stuck around, I was going to go hollow. It was time for me to leave, even if it meant bringing my time with these awesome students to an early end. I eventually found another job, and though I was incredibly excited to start my next journey, to begin my Age of Dark, I knew that the hardest part 
would be telling my students I wouldn't be coming back next year. The conversation was heartbreaking, and I'll never forget the way one of them, the very student who encouraged me to play Dark Souls in the first place, reacted to the news. If I live to be 100, I'll still hear his pained voice in my nightmares. The following year, things started off great at the new job, but eventually, a number of new, unprecedented difficulties came flying my way. By December 2021, I was close to going hollow again, when my wife, who still worked at the school I'd left behind, walked through the door with this. A displate featuring Laurentius's now famous phrase, purchased for me by my most heartbroken student and signed by all those I'd left behind. Like so many chosen undead at the most difficult parts of their journey and the player facing off with bosses more challenging than any they'd ever faced before, the words don't go hollow now repeated to me by the students who taught me so much already gave me the strength I needed to light the bonfire once more and charge through the fog gate in search of victory. And that is what makes Laurentius so important to Dark Souls. He starts out as a tutor for a branch of skills that will help struggling players overcome great difficulties before becoming a standard bearer for one of the game's strongest messages. And though he meets his end in ignominious irony, that message never loses its potency. Because no matter who you are, if you've played Dark Souls, then I have no doubt that you have some connection to his now famous words. So goodbye then. Be safe, friend. And don't you dare go hollow. Thanks for watching. Huge thanks to the illustrious Alex Rowe for allowing everyone on YouTube to use his incredible music for our videos. Huge shout out to my silver and gold tier YouTube channel members and Patreon subscribers, including James Pruitt, Raven Lampkin, Corey Matson, Gustavo Balabi, Reed, and Pothonian, who receive early access to these videos thanks to donations of $5 to $10 a month. Take care, and I'll see you guys next week.